Welcome back, sixth grade. Today's mini lesson is titled Identifying with Less Likable and Less Admirable Characters. We're still discussing bringing our lives to reading and bringing our reading to our lives. Today I have a new poem to share with you. We've already done some work with the poem before and today I have a new one. So as I read it aloud, will you again think about a part that you especially connect or resonate with? I want you to think about the part or different parts of the poem where you see yourself as I read. The title of the poem is In Line at the Drugstore by Claudia Rankine. Ready? In line at the drugstore, it's finally your turn. And then it's not, as he walks in front of you and puts his things on the counter. The cashier says, sir, she was next. When he turns to you, he is truly surprised. Oh my God, I didn't see you. You must be in a hurry, you offer. No, no, no. I really didn't see you. All right, let's have a turn and talk. I want you to find a partner, point if you need to. When I say go, you're gonna turn to said partner or group and talk about the place or places in the text where you saw yourselves. Ready? Go. Nice. So as I expected, some of you said that there have been times in your life when you were made to feel invisible. I see some me tubes. All right, Rita, so let's give you, I'm going to give you some feedback. While I was listening to the connections you made, I realized that when you read this poem and when you were listening, some of us tended to see ourselves in the good guys, the positive characters, the heroes, the characters that are most likable and admirable. In this poem, you see yourself in the cashier, some of us said. The person who stood up for the overlooked person. And some of you said you saw yourself in the person who was made to feel invisible. However, I didn't hear many of you say that you saw yourself in that man who walked right in front of the narrator and said, I didn't see you. All right, so today I wanna to teach you that as a reader, there's a lot you can miss if you only identify with the likable and admirable characters. The heroes the good guys. You also need to be able to see yourself in the villain. Otherwise, you mute some of the story's power to change who you are as a person as well. All right, so I have an example with an author that many of you might have known or read their work. Katherine Patterson is the author of Bridge to Terabithia and of The Great Gilly Hopkins. And also, Jacob Have I Loved. Many of you may have or may not have read it. Maybe you'll read it in the future. She recently told a group of teachers that when she's writing a story, she has learned that she needs to love and to see herself and even the bully, the villain. When she drafted Bridge to Terabithia, the bully in the story, Janice Avery, was actually based on some people from her own middle school days who had taunted her unmercifully. Ugh the worst. But as she revised the bridge, she found herself empathizing even with Janice Avery. Now, she says, that one of the biggest lessons for her is that she needs to see herself in the villain, or that villain will just be what she calls a cardboard cutout character. That doesn't sound too good. Or creative. But I think that's also true when you're reading, right? You and I need to see parts of ourselves in even the hard to like characters. The parts we don't really wanna see in ourselves either. Otherwise, the lessons we learn will kind of be like those cardboard cutout lessons. And who wants that? Boring. All right, so let's try some of this work with another text. And I'm gonna ask you to try it with the in line at the drugstore poem. But I want you to think with me about the story inside out first. And you can jot some of this notes down into your mini lesson notes if you'd like, or you can just think through it with me. All right, so in Inside Out, I want you to think whether you would put yourself mostly in Francisco's shoes. I know I did. And even though I've never been in his exact situation, I'm, you know, going to a school in a different country where I can't speak or understand the language. I related to him because there are parts, there are lots of times when I feel like the people 
in my life or around me don't really take the time to understand me. I really related to feeling left out and sometimes even embarrassed. So for a minute, let's think about Curtis. Curtis, Curtis, Curtis. Let's think about Curtis at his worst when he is roughing up Francisco because of the jacket, which we all know was in the lost and found and was given to Francisco by the principal. Right, I see some me too remembering. So my first thought was, whoa, I am not like that at all. But if I think about Curtis a little harder from his point of view, because there's always different perspectives, he sees someone wearing his jacket and all he thinks is about his own side of that story. All he thinks about is, hey, that's my stuff you've got on. And if I'm honest, there are, ton there are plenty of times where I just think about my side of the story and just about my stuff and what I want. I think I see a B2. But that's okay, because this is true. <laughs> However, I don't think that Curtis was really thinking about that whole event from Francisco's side. And sometimes that happens in our lives. He didn't stop to think about what this was like for him or to think about how he's bigger than this kid or to realize that Francisco was really struggling to fit in already and to feel okay. Right, so he was really lacking perspective in this scene. So do you notice how that went? How, my th how I thought through that and was able to come up with some evidence and a trait that I connect with and thought to myself, am I sometimes like this? Even if I didn't want to admit it at first, I did. <laughs> so what I'm really saying is that one way to let a story really change you is to realize that it can be easy to identify only with the good guy or with the character that seems most like you. But really well-written stories have special powers because readers can actually identify with the villain, the bully, or the person doing actions that even horrify us. And when we do have the courage to realize, I can be like that sometimes. We can see ourselves with a brand new perspective. And sometimes our reading can even help us make resolutions to try to be like that as little as possible. Remember that vocabulary word Miss Julie and I taught you? Empathy? Yeah, that's that. So let's go back to our poem. And this time while I read, I want you to think or notice whether you found it really easy to identify with the women who were the woman who was waiting patiently in line at the drugstore. Or not. But we'll talk about it after. Ready? In Line at the Drugstore by Claudia Rankin. 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 Sorry. In Line at the Drugstore, it's finally your turn. And then it's not, as he walks in front of you and puts his things on the counter. The cashier says, sir, she was next. When he turns to you, he is truly surprised. Oh, my God, I didn't see you. You must be in a hurry, you offer. No, no, no. I really didn't see you. So did you find it easy to identify with the cashier who noticed the patient woman and defended her? Thumbs up, down, middle, because maybe not. You're not sure. What was your thought about that man who pushed past the woman and said, I didn't see you. Did you think, I am not like him at all? I want to suggest that this poem would be much more powerful if you push to see yourself in the villain. I want you to reread this on your own and I want you to think about that and I want you to try to do that work in your mind. So take a minute to reread. Great, so let's have another turn and talk. Did you find it easy to identify with the cashier who noticed the patient woman and defended her? Ready, go.
Nice. Okay, readers, I really love the way you're stepping outside of your own comfort zones. So, round of applause. You are really carrying each other through the storm of great care and supporting each other's thoughts in your discussions. And I love that. I love that. Such beautiful and responsible listening and use of accountable talk. We are really maturing in our discussions and our conversations. And that's what your teachers love to see and hear. All right. So these are your notes for today. These are some anchor charts that we still have. Of course, you have the social groups can be based on in your own notes. But today we did more work on studying the less admirable characters to think, hmm, am I like this sometimes? And then some of us even stepped further to resolve to make some changes in our own lives based on this deep reading that we've done today. And you're going to continue to practice that on your own in your groups and read while you read your books. All right, so did you see how I was able to reread the passage and identify a word or a line that really spoke to me? And we did this work together, so... You can pat yourself on the back for that as well. Did you see how we were able to write about what I brought or what you brought to that word or line, that passage or a larger text? And we were able to think about how our reading is really shaped by the groups we belong to. And some of us are still thinking through that as well. And that's okay because that's what this work is all about. So some teacher tips. A reminder, today as you read, or whenever you are reading, because we're always reading, right? 40 to 60 pages a day, a week. So remember that even though it's easy to identify with the likable, admirable characters, the heroes, the innocent victims, you will often learn more about your characters and yourselves if you really try to see yourself in the villains, okay? Identifying with the villains can really help you to learn more about the text. So you don't learn cardboard, cutout, boring lessons. I cannot wait to continue this learning and discussions and listening to what you're talking about with your partners and in your groups and writing in your notebooks. I am really proud of the work I've been seeing so far. So continue to share your thoughts and talk out your thoughts. And of course, write them in your notes and we will continue our independent work and I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.